From Bucky, a path leads along the shoreline, and as a set of railed steps lead down to a footbridge over a narrow rocky inlet, the village of Finichty comes into view. The Waymarked Trail is known as the Murray Coastal Path, stretching from Forest in the west to the village of Cullen in the east, linking all the coastal villages between. The accent used by the people in this stretch of coast is a local dialect of Doric, which explains the strange pronunciation of the village name. I had now reached Finichty Scenic Harbour, sheltered from the worst of the elements by its rugged rocky headlands to the east and west, and with sturdy walls to protect it from the seas that crash relentlessly onto this north-facing coastline. On the southwest corner of the front I stumbled on a sculpture of a fisherman watching over the harbour. It is known as the White Mani. Finichty has quite a substantial harbour for a little village such as this, but it had to. By the mid-1800s there were 140 boats based here, but when improvements were made to Bucky Harbour nearby, most of the boats moved there. I headed back down to the village, and an extremely attractive village it is too. The little street opened out to an uncharacteristic spacious corner with equally attractive cottages huddled around it. On a glorious September day such as this, the Nichty is a delight to wander around. I was now going to head up past the attractive little blue cottage and round below the hillock that the church stands on to the oldest part of the village. This is the Hythe. It was originally known as Crooked Haven. This was the first part of the village to be occupied in the 1400s. The cottages were built around the little natural inlet here, long before the present harbour was built on the other side of the bluff. I turned into Duke Street to find an attractive row of old fishermen's cottages lined along the rocky outcrop of Long Head. I left Duke Street through a narrow alley to the more formally lined New Street and going by its name it may have been built a little later. The cottages were still quite similar and every bit as colourful. I made my way back onto the Murray Coastal Path where it rises above and back from the cliffs at Tronach Head on its way to the neighbouring village of Putnoki. The coastal path continues along the cliffs. It's less than two miles to Putnoki. The path rises gradually until we reach the village. Putnoki is different from the other villages in this stretch of coast inasmuch that it is built on top of the cliffs that drop steeply to the harbour below. The name Putnoki derives from the Gaelic for the hilly port. The road around the cliff tops was completely closed off with Harris fencing while safety improvements were being carried out. I was really disappointed at that, so I headed along the main route through the village instead. I glanced down one of the long narrow winds that culminate at the cliff top road. That is typical of the street layout in the older part of the village. The layout of the village is based on its sea tune past and it still retains much of its appeal. Now Putnoki has a more laid-back residential feel about the place and is now geared more towards tourism. The main use of the harbour is now taken up by leisure craft. Commercial road stretches from one end of Putnoki to the other. In fact, it has to change its name about two-thirds of the way along. Strangely though, it is almost made up of gable ends. It's crisscrossed by about ten other streets running north to south. The older houses are lined along the cliff top road. I was disappointed at missing out on that. At the end of Patrol Road, the Murray Coastal Path leaves the village. At the entrance to the path, there's a signpost giving directions. I headed over to the Bow and Fiddle Rock. No visit to Pernoki is complete without seeing this. It is the village's signature feature and it was very impressive indeed from down here. I decided to head on and made my way back up onto the coastal path to Cullen. The path then continued past the Bow and Fiddle Rock. I stopped at a board giving info on the walk. Then I continued my way to Cullen. The coastal path into Cullen was along the old disused Murray Coast Railway line and much of it has been incorporated into the coastal path. Cullen is an extremely attractive village. It is actually built in two very different and separate sections. Sea Town is a huddle of old fishermen's cottages tucked in behind the sea wall 
and isolated from the rest of the village by both the main road, the steep railway banking and its wonderful viaducts. New Cullen is built on the south side of the railway line. The Countess of Seafield would not allow the railway anywhere near Cullen House and the only solution left to the Great Northern Railway was the construction of these magnificent viaducts. I was now approaching the second viaduct. I headed over for a better view of the harbour area. At the eastern end of Sea Town is the Thomas Telford Design Cullen Harbour, built in 1819. As elsewhere, fishing was centralised at the larger harbours like Lossiemouth, Bucky and Fraserburgh. Nowadays, the harbour is mainly used for leisure. Cullen is the home of a local gastronomical delicacy a traditional fish soup called Cullen Skink. Skink is garlic for delicacy, and it is made from smoked haddock, milk, potato and onion. Believe it or not, it was originally made with beef, but it was proven to be a rather costly dish to make, and in the 19th century, the beef was replaced by a cheaper and more plentiful ingredient, haddock. It is now a delicacy served in the best restaurants, and no visit to Cullen is complete without sampling this world-famous dish. I noticed the old hill fort above the track, so I headed over for a closer look. Castle Hill can be reached from a well-made path from an access beside the middle viaduct. It was once the site of an 11th century fort, where in 1327 Queen Elizabeth de Burgh, the second wife of Robert the Bruce, died and was buried at nearby Cullen Kirk. There are stunning panoramic views to be had from the hill here over Cullen Bay and its surroundings. As I made my way back down, there were superb views of the harbour below. Sea Town of Cullen is a very attractive huddle of colourfully painted cottages. Prior to the rebuilding of the village, there were a lot less fishermen's cottages than we find here today. It is thought to have existed as far back as 600 AD. Sea Town today is not the village that was planned by the Earl of Seafield. Instead, it's a mesmerising and unique jumble of fascinating small stone fishermen's cottages squeezed into every corner of the area available to them. I found myself wandering up many of the lanes and glancing up alleys. Sea Town of Cullen is fascinating and must not be missed. I headed back along the fascinating shore road, gable ends to the Murray coast for added protection when the weather is a bit less favourable than it is today. Then I headed up another lane before heading for the car. 